Hi, and welcome to another edition of the Aussie Ideas Man. I couldn't resist this one because in the past I've made comments about the suspicions of lies. In fact, they've been pretty strong, where there's always been two stories to the Aptera history. This is another case where I think there's got to be some lies, and it hinges around Sarah Hardwick's letter to Aptera Owners Club that says that they are consolidating two factory sites. And then probably after Sarah Hardwick's letter, it's hard to pinpoint a precise date, but days are too close. It is probably after Aptera's letter. Chris Anthony says that they're keeping two sites in California. This is completely contradictory to Sarah's explanation that both sites are up for lease. Just one more suspicious event where it just looks like one of them has to be lying. Let's see if they can explain their way out of this one. Uh, so this is definitely the building. And so I was concerned when I found out that this was available for lease. So I reached out to Aptera, uh, Chief Marketing Officer Sarah Hardwick, and I asked her, hey, can I get a comment from you guys about this uh, about this facility? Like, what's going on? Is that is that good, bad? Like, are you guys having problems? And um, very graciously, they responded to me and they put out this statement. So this is the statement uh, that they put out. Um, Aptera will be consolidating our physical footprint in North County, San Diego for greater capital efficiency. We currently lease a 77,147 square foot facility at 5818 El Camino Real. So this is the facility that um, we all know about. We've seen multiple uh, rent uh, videos of this area. I think they just had the like the EV Electric Vehicle Association meeting there. The, uh, the Aptera Ambassadors meeting uh, was there. Um, and we've seen all kinds of pictures of this place. The, I, the previous leaser of this facility used to be a medical supply company. I think they made like hardware for spinal surgery. Okay, so, so we knew about this. This is, and this address is the address that's on their SEC filings as their main address. And a 134,299 square foot facility at 2340 Cousteau Court. So confirm um, that that is a location. With manufacturing of Aptera's carbon fiber bodies taking place at the CPC Group in Italy to start, we won't require as much space as originally anticipated to meet our first year production goals. We are in the process of unifying our presence at one of these two locations as a creative strategy to keep Aptera as investable as possible over the coming months. Both buildings are on the market as we explore options and either location can accommodate our space needs going forward. Our low volume solar production line will continue to operate has been and we'll be gearing up to build 40 vehicles days once we reach our funding milestones. In the coming years, we plan to expand and replicate our manufacturing and assembly facilities in more regions across the US. Uh, we're starting in Southern California in Carlsbad uh, where we'll have one manufacturing facility um, and one facility that does sub-assembly. So um, our solar assemblies and some of our like front suspension, rear suspension, and then we bring all those pieces together to, uh, to build the whole vehicle. Journal covers um, and some other things that have really uh, shown a light on what we do. And we've capitalized on that by gaining pre-orders at a pace that no other EV comparable has. Um, this illustrates Rivian and Fisker. Uh, some of the other people hired their data a little better, uh, like Lucid. Uh, but we got to 25,000 pre-orders for our vehicle faster than any other EV comparable out there. Uh, and we did it with zero advertising budget, just a communications team. So this, this illustrates uh, Rivian's growth to 25,000 orders, and they spent $30 million on advertising to get there. Um, Aptera spent nothing. Um, our use of proceeds, right now we are out actively raising a $150 million round to get into production. Uh, we've broken that into 50 million chunks for some of the uh, bigger investors that we're talking to, talking to a lot of uh, sovereign wealth um, and uh, institutional investors and also high net worth family office uh, types. Uh, through 2028, we aspire to deliver 1 million Aptera uh, by 2033. Uh, we do that by building... Well, that is very aggressive. They're hoping to deliver a million vehicles by 2028. That's... Uh... That's pretty ambitious. And they said that they want to be cash flow positive within one year of, um, of starting volume production. So at the end of 2024, they want to be cash flow positive. That would be impressive because Tesla was not cash flow positive for many years after they started. So, um, okay, well, that's, th those are very aggressive uh, um, and 
and uh, optimistic projections, and I hope that they're right. So what they're trying to do, and I think this makes perfect sense, is they are trying to um, uh, consolidate their location to one of these two locations. I'm thinking they prefer to go to this location and close out this location, and you can see how much money they would be saving by doing that. They would be saving um, $141,000 per month. Uh, which is a you know a sizable uh, savings, and I think they they thought they needed all the space back when they were doing the honeycomb, uh, the honeycomb uh, resin sandwich composite structure because that takes up a lot of space. And they I thought they I think they thought they were building those um, those bodies in house, uh, and they were going to do that part, and that was going to be one of their core competencies. But they've offloaded that to the CPC group um, to doing this um, forged carbon bodies. So they don't need the space anymore. And so they are consolidating um, to one of these two uh, spots. So hopefully they will find a subleaser who will take over their lease at one of these locations and they can save themselves some cash burn um, per month. So I think this is a very wise move that they're making. And so it makes me feel better that they're not having um, some big changes of like shutting down. I thought when I first saw that it was on, on the lease, I was like, well, maybe they decided that they're going to, you know, offshore their solar production to someone else and they had uh, leased out this thing. Or maybe they're in worse financial trouble uh, than people imagined. But I think everything is as it seems. You know, they've had a lot of personnel changes. Um, they've unfortunately let a lot of their engineers go over the past year, I think as a cost cutting measure. And um, now they're trying to pare down their um, their uh, burn rate by getting rid of some facilities that they don't need, which um, makes sense. You know, ideally they should have done this earlier um, and uh, offloaded this cash burn even earlier, but um, hopefully they will find funding soon and they can become revenue positive. But um, uh, but you can invest in Eptera um, at invest.eptera.us and become one of the over 15,000 investors we have. You can invest from $200 to $2 million through that platform. Um, and we appreciate your time and that you've uh, listened. Okay, so it sounds like the audience that they were speaking to did not have like billionaires in there because he was saying to the audience that you can invest and invest. But if you know someone that can invest a large amount of money, let us know and they'll talk to them personally. Um, again, they reiterated that thing where they're working on $150 million to $200 million in funding uh, div divided up into $50 million chunks. So the accelerator program is definitely going to help with the initial tooling. But to get to this very aggressive ramp they're talking about, they do need like you know, hundreds of millions of dollars, uh, which is uh, wh where they're looking for. And I'm, I'm glad that they have uh, several good prospects. Um, the other important thing that they mentioned is uh, that they were going to be cash flow positive within a year, which makes me think that their margins are quite good. They'd be losing money for a long, long time and bleeding cash for a long time. But if they are indeed cash flow positive within a year, that's that's very good for them and very good for investors. Okay. Um, thanks for watching this with me. That's all from me. Until I find any more anomalies, bye for now. Stay safe.